Check it out. What a glamorous star-studded party. Wow, complete with red carpet arrival. Hollywood? No, Pollywood, as we'll explain in just a few minutes on this edition of Liberty News TV. I'm Norval Rose. First, the pattern continues. The pattern of aggressively secularizing the U.S. military, stripping strains of Christianity from the armed forces, turning military bases into, into what? Re-education camps? If you're not familiar with a fellow named Mikey Weinstein, you should be, because Weinstein has reportedly been selected by the Pentagon to help develop new policies on religious tolerance, when Weinstein himself is anything but tolerant. Weinstein's writings and rantings through the years are often shockingly anti-Christian. Recently he blogged, Today we face incredibly well-funded gangs of fundamentalist Christian monsters who terrorize their fellow Americans by forcing their weaponized and twisted version of Christianity upon their helpless subordinates in our nation's armed forces. Now this raging anti-Christian crusader will be a consultant to the Pentagon? This in the wake of other initiatives in the U.S. military that could be seen as building a case against certain religious groups as extremist threats. Have you seen the new polling that says Americans are essentially more afraid of the government than they are of terrorist attacks? According to this pair of recent polls, for the first time since 9-11, Americans are more fearful their government will abuse constitutional liberties than will fail to keep them safe. The polls by Fox News and the Washington Post found similar concerns about government overreach. It would seem that famous quote widely attributed to Benjamin Franklin is really resonating right now. Those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. In the name of safety, politically correct reactionary lunacy lives on. With news that a fifth grader in California on a school-sponsored camping trip was suspended and threatened with expulsion for packing along a Swiss Army knife. School officials, including the principal, insisted that punishment be swift and severe. Now, I spent many years at summer camp on many outings and recall that you used to be reprimanded for not packing along your Swiss Army knife. Now to the gaudy gala of the weekend. The event that took place in Washington, D.C., which for this glitzy gathering we dub Pollywood, where politics and Hollywood collide and commingle. Officially the annual dinner party of the White House Correspondents Association, it's really become the White House Celebrities Affair revealing more than ever the tacky, incestuous relationship among the highest ranks of political power, the liberal elite of showbiz, and the so-called journalists, so-called journalists, who cover the presidency. But quite a few observers of such relationships are becoming more outspoken in their misgivings about the cozy camaraderie that such an intimate affair fosters. Media cronyism on resplendent display. Even noted political analyst Larry Sabato took to Twitter over the weekend, criticizing the event, lamenting, Years ago, I thought media elites just didn't understand what WHCD, the White House Correspondents' Dinner, did to their image. Now I realize they know and don't care. A critical question that must be asked in the wake of such a euphoric event, can we trust the media attending this kind of lavish love-in to be true watchdogs to power or mere lapdogs in the court of the king? That's Liberty News TV for today. Thank you for joining us. I'm Norval Rose, looking forward to seeing you right here next time.